subscribe to the Danny Houston Podcast, man. Fast forward, I think it was like, I lost track of them for like three years or so. And I ended up going to Houston. And just by chance, I went to a stop and go. And I came out of the stop and go. And it was this dude again. The, 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 the guy that, that you know came to be our producer. And I say, hey, I know you. He's like, I know you. So we hooked up and we ended up he ended up taking me to 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 his studio over off of, off a of chimney rock, and uh, so he was like at first he he said he had this group. Um, he said, uh, "Yeah, yeah, I, I want you to be part of this group called uh, called the Convicts." I said, "The Convicts?" He said, "Yeah, yeah, you know he played some stuff for me. You know, he, uh, the first sir, song I heard was uh, it was a song. It was it was three two and Big Mike." Um, they sampled, either they sampled or they replayed that bass line by a slave, the slide, and do, 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 do. And that, that came to be the, the song of, I think it was X Cons Get Funky, and like, yeah, dude, this is for the convicts. X -Con, I forget the name of the song. But they wanted me to be a part of that, so I said, okay, you know, I'm 17, I don't know nothing, you know. I, no, in fact, I'm not 17, now I'm 20. I don't know no better. But then he said, nah, 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 nah. I got a better group. We're going to put you in uh, this group called the Black Monks. Um, okay, you know. So then he, you know, he started explaining to me everything about Black Monks. And I was like, what in the hell? Because the whole thing was, the whole concept of Black Monks was, <laughs> we just three Captain Planet type motherfuckers. One person is controller of the water. Another person is controller of the wind. Another person is controller of the fire. So I was water. AWOL was wind. 3-2 was fire. We all these, these, these monks and we, and, we, and, we, and we live in this jungle, in this secret temple. And the way we get around, we swing around on vines. I'm like, what, what the fuck is you talking about? How high are you right now? But it worked. We got together, we started recording these songs, and people was like, what the hell are they talking about, you know? And at the time, I didn't smoke, but it was so much contact with the weed going around, as I, I couldn't help but be high right along with these niggas. But we made these crazy ass songs, uh, Aggravated Monkey, uh, Swinging on a Vine, and uh, uh, Secrets of the Hidden Temple, and all that. I, don't, I forget a lot of the names of the songs, it's been 30 something years, but it worked. And I mean, we really started to get recognition. We came out smack dab in the middle of gangsta, in the gangster shit era, talking about aligning your chakras and, and, and expanding your mind and, you know, smoke weed and do this and do that. And the only other ones that was doing it with us, along with us, was Wu-Tang Clan. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to tell y'all that. I'm going to tell y'all a story about that. But, you know, it, it was really working. And we started to outsell just for a moment. We started to outsell Ghetto Boys, Big Mike, everybody on, on the label's roster because we were so far different from everything and anything that the entire South had to offer. But unfortunately, you know, we kind of fell into that same category of, well, you know, I feel like we was just a tax write-off. They really didn't understand what they had in us as a group. And honestly, I blame myself for a lot because um, when you sign to a label, you do not go to a label with no manager, no agent, no publicist, no attorney. You will get done. It doesn't matter if you are on an independent label or a major label. You know what I'm saying? It's like if you don't have your weapons to protect you, you're done. Donnie Houston. Donnie Houston. Donnie Houston.